today. Welcome back to our class in the Analytical Chemistry Laboratory. Today, the activity that we are going to do is about the analytical balance. I'm going to introduce to you the parts of this analytical balance and how it is being operated. So, these are the parts of the analytical balance. One, we have the wind screen. The wind screen is found both at both sides. We have at the right, and we have also it at the left. Now, the purpose of this wind screen is that when you are going to weigh something inside the analytical balance, the analytical balance should be absolutely free from the air or the wind so that the weight of the object that is to be weighed is not affected by the presence of the wind or the air. So it has to be closed once you are already weighing. For example, if you are going to get the weight of this beaker, then you are going to open or slide the windscreen and then place it like that onto the center of the pan and you have to close it and get ready with the reading which is displayed on the LCD screen. So that is the purpose of the wind screen. Another is we have the level indicator. The level indicator will tell us that the entire set of the analytical balance is properly placed. We have to situate that the bubble of the level is at the center. Then we have also the on and off switch. So if we're going to use the balance, we have just to click this switch on so that will operate already. And once you are done weighing, you have to switch it off. Then we have the adjustable feet. Now, suppose the analytical balance is not properly set or placed. We have to adjust this adjustable feet in order to have the bubble at the center will be properly located. Then we have the display screen or the LCD display screen. Here is where you are going to read the weight of the object that is being weighed. Then inside is the pan. This is a very, very sensitive pan. So that when you are going to weigh something, you have to see to it that the container is absolutely dry before you are going to place it into the pan. Because even the moisture of your finger can be read by this analytical balance. A very sensitive balance. As I have said in the beginning of this class, when I introduced the apparatus that we are commonly using in the analytical chemistry lab, that the accuracy of this analytical balance is up to the 10,000th place of a decimal. So those are the parts of the analytical balance. Now, I'm going to show you how this is to be operated. So if we're now ready to get the weight of a certain substance, like this one, let us weigh this pack of sodium carbonate. So we have to see to it that the container into which we're going to place this sodium carbonate is clean, such as this beaker. Now, when you are going to handle this beaker, we have to use a tongue so that this will not be touched by your hands. Because as I have said a while ago, there is a tendency that the moisture of your fingers could transfer into the beaker. Otherwise, if you do not have a tongue, then you can use a paper holder. You just make, you just fold the paper such that it will be used to wrap this around and wrap the container around and it is the paper that you're going to hold. Say for example, we sometimes call this a paper tongue. So you just fold it this way 
and this way. So in the absence of the tongue, you can use this paper tongue and you hold it this way. So you're not holding it with your bare hands anymore. You can use a paper tongue. Then you open this and place it here like that. Okay, because we have the crucible tongue, it is advantageous to use it this way. Okay, so let us say we are going to weigh now this substance and we have to place this substance into the beaker. So to start, we are going to switch on this switch button for the on and off. And you can see here already the display. I am switching on also the zero tear switch so that the reading here will be all zero. Now, because the readings there are all zero, so this is now ready for weighing. Because we are going to weigh this sodium carbonate, we are going to transfer this into the beaker. However, it would be wiser to weigh the empty beaker first before you are going to put the sodium carbonate inside the beaker so that the mass or the weight of the sodium carbonate is only the difference between the beaker plus the sodium carbonate inside minus the weight of the beaker. So let's start. Open the windscreen, then place this inside and close the windscreen. You have to wait for the reading to become stable. That means there will be no more change in the digits displayed on the screen. So in this case, the digits are now stable and it reads 29.7179 grams. So the weight of this beaker, 50 ml beaker, is 29 and 7,179 ten thousandths, or simply 29.7179. Okay, now because we are going to get the weight of the sodium carbonate, let us switch this off, then remove the beaker, and place inside this beaker one pack of the sodium carbonate. Then switch on the button switch. Okay, since it is yet stabilizing its reading, we're going to switch on the zero tear to make all the display of the digits zero. So you have it there zero now. Then that is ready for weighing. Open. Then place this beaker and the reading is 29.9684 29.9684 grams. Now, the weight of the sodium carbonate placed inside the beaker is the difference between the weight when the beaker is placed with the sodium carbonate minus the weight of the empty beaker. So, a while ago, we weighed 
the empty beaker and has the weight 29.7179 grams. And this time, when we place the sodium carbonate, the weight is 29.9684. So the difference between the two weights is 0 0.2505 grams. So that is the weight of the sodium carbonate that we placed inside the beaker. The next to be weighed is the 250 ml beaker. So with this 250 ml beaker, we have to, again to set the zero mark. Then open the windscreen, place this 250 ml beaker. And the weight of the beaker is 108.1019 grams. Anyway, we're going to get a second trial for this. So let's remove it now. Back to zero pair. Then place it again. For the second trial, the reading is 108.1020, 108.1020 grams. So, and I will ask you to get the average. So, we have already taken the weight or the mass of the 250 ml beaker with its trial 1 and trial 2. So, to get the average weight or average mass, you have to add the weight of the beaker for the first trial plus the weight of this same beaker for the second trial, then divide it by 2. So, you have to do it yourself. Then, you are going to get the weight of this 50 ml beaker. So, set again the analytical balance to its zero mark. Then, open the windscreen, place this empty beaker. This is a new beaker, new 50ml beaker. It's, it's uh, different from the first one in which I told you on how to weigh a substance. So this time, this 50ml beaker weighs... 28 and 9,531 ten-thousandths or 28.9531 grams. That is for the first trial. Okay, then let's have again, set it to zero mark, then get the second trial for the same 50 ml beaker. For the second trial, it reads 28 point nine five three two grams twenty eight point nine five three two grams so with the two weights that you have already taken for this 50 ml beaker you have to add them so the first weight or the mass the second weight or the mass of this 50 ml beaker then divide it by two to get its average weight then remove this 
out. Then the third apparatus that we're going to weigh is the Erlenmeyer flask. This is the 125 ml beaker flask and it weighs, let's wait a while. And it weighs 88.1669 grams. Repeat, for the first trial, the weight of the Erlenmeyer flask is 88.1669 grams. Then let's take the second trial. Set again this to zero. Then open. Then place this early in my flask. For the second trial, the weight of this Erlenmeyer flask is 88.1668. I guess it has the same weight as the first trial. So those are the apparatus that we weighed here in the analytical balance. Let's go to another apparatus which determines the weight, which is the top loading. So we're done using the analytical balance. Another apparatus that is used to determine the weight or the mass is the top loading. The accuracy of this top loading is up to the hundredths place or second decimal place. So we have also the parts. We have the pan into which we're going to place the object to be weighed. Then we have the switch, the on and off switch. And we have the LCD display screen. So to start, we have to switch this on. So let's start with the 50 ml beaker. And it registers here 28.95 grams. It's 28.95 grams. So you can see the difference in, in terms of the accuracy or the display of the weight. It's only up to the hundredths place. That's for the first trial. Then let's have this back to zero. Then place this again onto the pan to get its weight. For the second trial, it reads 28.95 grams still. 28.95 grams. Then let's weigh the beaker. This is the 250 ml beaker, set to zero, okay, zero. And the weight of the beaker for its first trial is 108.07 grams, 108.07 grams, okay. Let's have this back to zero mark, then have the second trial and it reads 108.07 grams 108.07 grams and then have it back to zero let's have the Erlenmeyer flask 125 ml Erlenmeyer flask and it reads 88.15 grams, 88.15 grams, that is for its first trial. Have this back to zero, then for the second trial, it is 88.14 grams, 88.14 grams. Okay, so this is how the top loading is to be used. It can also determine weight up to the hundredths place. Then let's have the triple beam balance. 
This is a triple beam balance. This is used to determine weights or, or masses. And its accuracy is up to the tenth place. Okay, now these are the set of weights in which you are going to use to counterpoise the mass of the objects to be weighed. Set of weights. Okay. This is a set of weight. And this is the pointer that we have to see to it that this points to the zero mark. So that determines that the balance is set right. And if the pointer there doesn't set to zero or point to zero mark, we have to use the tear. So we have to use the tear. This is the tear. This is the tear. Okay. Now, since our pointer points to the zero mark, meaning this is ready to be used. So let's start weighing the small beaker, a 50 ml beaker. So because that is 50 ml beaker, the smallest one, a while ago we said it's 28, so let's go to 20 and move this rider. such that the pointer points to the zero mark. Okay? Okay. So, you have to add a weight here, which is 20, plus this is there in the mark 8, but it is up to the 8. So, this is read as 20 plus 8 is 28, but it marks there up to almost 9. So, that is 28.123.9. Then, set this back to 0. Then take the second trial. For the second trial, set this again. 20 mark. Then let's try to see. Boy. No, no, no. 20. Let's try to see. Okay. So again, we have it there, 28.9 grams, 28.9 grams. Okay, let's set these riders back to zero, and we're going to weigh the next beaker, which is a 250 ml beaker. So, 100 so that this is about 100. So we will use this 100. Okay. 100. Let's try. Heavy. So we will just use the small tear. The small rider, I mean. Okay. Starts to move. And it reads, this is 100, then we have 7. So it's 107.9 grams. It's 107.9 grams. Okay, let's set this back to zero. And let's take the second trial. For the second trial, then let's set this to 100. Then to 7. Okay. 
the pointer is already pointing to zero mark. So this is again 100 plus 7.9. It is 107.9 grams. Okay, so this, that's for the second trial. Let's go to the next apparatus, which is the 125 Erlenmeyer flask. So, this is, let's try to see. Got the weight. Okay, the weight is 8, this is 80 here, plus 8.2. So, the weight is 88.2 grams. The weight is 88.2 grams. Okay, then we will set this back to zero. Okay. Then place this back for its second trial. Set the riders. Eight. And this one. Okay, and the weight is 88.3 grams. The weight is 88.3 grams. So, you have to get the average weight of these three apparatus being weighed in three different uh, balances. Using the analytical balance, the top loading, and the triple beam balance. What you're going to do is to write all your observations, answer all the questions given in the lab guide, and you submit your output next week via the email that I gave you. But be sure to have a hard copy of this exercise or this activity in terms of your experiment report. So these are all for today. This is your teacher. Professor Nesita Suruiz of Holy Name University.